first of all, thank you everyone for coming to the show. Um, it means a lot to me. Um, thank you also to North Park for giving me the space uh, to have something like this. That is also incredible. Um, it's the first time I've ever had uh, multiple bodies of work shown uh, in a space quite like this. Um, but yeah, um, to kind of dive into the project, um, back in September or October, um, I was kind of looking for ways to um, just make something new. I had been working on a lot of music, especially, but way less visual things, um, way less drawings, way less um, illustrator and Photoshop stuff. So I was trying to just kind of figure out how I could um, create a project that uses kind of multiple things that I had some, some skill set in, but uh, most importantly wanted to improve in, um, especially in Photoshop. Um, and so um, maybe after a couple months, I had the idea for the stay at home project, uh, starting with the two pieces on this wall. Um, and so I, I made these pieces first and then the concept of the show um, came together shortly after. Um, and that being that these little people in um, all the pieces represent uh, the creations, the music, the ideas that I have, and um, and I wanted to tackle kind of a subject that I was struggling with, which isn't too apparent in the the work itself, but I had been struggling with like releasing work out into the world. So the music I was making wasn't really being heard by anyone. Um, the drawings that I would do or uh, other things I was making, like it just wasn't being shown to anyone because I would just hold it in for myself. Maybe it was um, because I had really high expectations for where I wanted to bring something or if I was just nervous um, to post on social media because every time I'd make a new post on Instagram, I'd lose a couple followers, and I was like, just worried that if I keep posting, I'm gonna go down to like, I don't know, <laughs> numbers don't matter. But um, yeah, there was just many factors for why I wasn't really releasing work, and it was probably and mainly just insecurities that uh, were necessary to have. Um, so, all these little people, they represent uh, different things that I'm working on, um, but uh, this show kind of captures my past self because um, these little people aren't leaving the house. They are um, with me, and they're growing, and they're hanging out with me, and um, I love them very much, but they are staying at home and I'm not letting them out. So maybe um, if this project continues to expand, I explore um, different ways they do leave the home. And uh, yeah, I think, I think that's a good summary. don't um, have names. I think a few of them have been inspired by other people um, or just like different figures that I wanted to recreate. Um, there are a few of them that are specifically inspired by a color palette, which I kind of make shown in this one, um, how like some of the people are directly inspired by the colors from some of the music that I'm working on. 
Um, as Ableton Live kind of generates random colors every time you make a new track, and so the drums, uh, the instruments, the audio, they're all different colors, and that informed a, a few of the people when I was um, drawing them. But um, I think that's, that's the extent of how inspired they are. Um, Ableton, and then maybe some just like iconic poses and um, things um, that mostly felt lighthearted and friendly. I guess I wanted to ask, like, how much of a hand you have in terms of, like, the, um, like, the, like, shooting the photos, like, in the sense, I, I know that you, like, set, like, the camera, like, angle position and, like, what's in the scene itself, but do you mess around with, like, lighting, or, like, do you, like, lure your cat somewhere, or, like, things like that? Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think... For a few of them, lighting was a big factor. Um, some some of them, like uh, the the companion one photo, that was great timing, um, and I think a lot of them do kind of come down to timing, like what's happening in the moment. Um, for both of the ones with the cats, I just kind of got lucky with timing, and I really liked the photo photos of where they were at that exact moment. Um, there, there are a few of them that I really did construct lighting to kind of set up the shot. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think that's about it in terms of um, shot setup. I think there was only one photo, which is that one, that I didn't, in, like I didn't take the photo for this project. The rest of the photos I did take with this project in mind. Mm. One thing I'm thinking about, especially when I look at the copy one at the end, is like stock photography for um, products. And like, even though it's not like probably the knives in the hand would be just a little more in the frame. Within, like there's something about the lighting and the placement, of, like performative quality of the like pouring of the coffee, and that's really interesting to me. I, it and I actually I feel that way about a couple of them, like the Lego one feels. It, there's a kind of like um, almost like store display kind of quality of the imaging or the pizza one where again it almost feels like they're performing for the camera to like put the cheese on. I, I really like that a lot. Um, I like that it feels like it's living in this space in between a kind of commercial advertising product photography and like this lived space in this like imaginative world. Um, I don't know, I think that's I think it's really interesting. I don't think I noticed that quality in it before when we talked about it, but since I've since we met before and the couple times I've been in here, it feels like that becomes more noticeable to me. Cool. Yeah, there's like these like kind of Easter eggs that are peppered throughout where it keeps the series from being just one thing only. Like, uh, Kelly, to your point, like the the, for, the, dig, the illustrated coffee mug in one mm -hmm. is like the only time where we see something of human scale that's drawn with the same way as the people. Mm -hmm. So I think when I first saw it, I said that it looked like what you can virtually put something from Target into your living room. <laughs> and like, so it does sort of feel both product placement, but in your real space, you can see right. how this mirror yeah. looks on your wall or, and there's like something that can be sinister about that or like surveyed, <laughs> but, or surveilled, but I, um, but it does like, because that's just one place where it's happening, it doesn't become the mood of everything. And like, 
I think this one is the only place where there's like furniture that's been built at their scale. So like this sort of makes it feel like, okay, well they, they must have some like a space that's their own inside of your space. And like there's just things that keep happening um, like that is the only place where it seems like we get a glimpse into how they're made. Like, right. But there's yeah. even like some ambiguity between like is that form dissolving into the music as some sort of like <laughs> um, almost like a sacrificial <laughs> like um, uh, sometimes like it could be read as that or is, is this actually how they're produced like is this where they come from is this a is this a origin story and so like I really like how there's never only one thing that's happening and it really sort of adds possibilities and layers to the narrative and like complicates just a single read and um, and that's good so like can you say something about like those those feel like the most surprising in terms of like that's a space that's not where there's only things that are at their scale mm -hmm. and then this is very different in terms of how the figure is activated. I, anyway, can you talk about where they came from? Absolutely. Well, um, our fireplace mantle has a ton of Lego uh, on it. And so my roommate, um, he is the main one who's making these, uh, these creations of Lego. And I, I thought that since these little people are close to the same scale as a Lego figure. They're a little bit taller. Um, but because they're very close, I thought, um, well, if these characters were in my home, I think they would enjoy uh, hanging out at the, on the tower and um, on the, the Seinfeld couch and just in near things that are similar to their size and their scale. Um, so I kind of imagined they like would really enjoy being in a space that is their scale. Um, and I think of it more as like they were, they kind of stumbled upon the stuff that feels like it was for them rather than mm. it was made for them prior. Um, and then um, this piece where there is a figure, um, so he is coming out of the computer as the the song is being exported. Um, and I, I did really just kind of want to give a glimpse of maybe one way uh, that these characters are formed. Mm. Do you have any, is there something in your mind as like another way that these characters are formed or? I think, yeah, so like, maybe, I, I did have an idea for um, a character coming out of a drawing so like maybe I would draw them specifically and they'd be standing up off the page. Mm -hmm. um, and because I don't limit the characters to uh, just music, I, I think they are constructed other ways that I just haven't really explored yet. Mm -hmm. okay. Nathan, there's no sequence to these, right? No secrets. Sequence. 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 Um, the sequence. <laughs> um, I I don't think there is a sequence. I haven't. Um, it's a good question, but um, I was just curious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. As of right now, I don't have a, a sequence plan for them. But that would be a fun thing to explore. Um, how each individual piece could be. Um, tied into a, a larger narrative, whether that's um, tying them all together or expanding on the scene that it's in already. Yeah, I think from hearing all these comments, I feel like thinking about what else could be happening from those things is a way to create some others. So now that you're kind of mentioning that there might be other ways to create it, now I really want to see like what that would look like. Mm -hmm. So I think almost all of them could be expanded to like more images that might relate to that one thing, even if it doesn't have a specific sequence 
even from that. You're like, maybe it would, but I don't think it would need to. It would just be another, just like a whole series of things that are kind of about the creation of them. And another one that's maybe about how they're relaxing and spending their downtime. Or, but it just seems like a lot of possibilities to expand on that. Yeah, it seems really exciting. Cool. Yeah, I, I agree. I like that. And I like the maybe not having them sequential. Because I really like the openness with which you can sort of like, it just sort of feels like they're existing around you and you might put together different stories and understand like, you, you know, if there's more images, you might start to put together ideas. But I like that you can kind of drop into any of them and they'll, um, you won't be lost if you just like drop in at one point but don't see the stuff before it. You know, I like that it all is sort of this, um, existence that you're tracking. I, it makes me think a little bit almost like a, a has a almost like anthropological quality about it. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm not even sure that you know like all the stuff that they're up to, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you catch glimpses of them and like do you know if they eat or not? Or like do they sleep or are they always awake? Like it's interesting to think about. Yeah, those are fun questions that I, I'm not sure if I have come up with all those fine details, but uh, well, it would be fun to explore. Yeah, yeah. And I told you with our class the other day that like I don't imagine them talking, but I do imagine them making sounds that can sound like talking. <laughs> That might actually even relate to the music mm -hmm. in a way for some of them. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, they could have like harmonic sounds coming out of their heads since they don't have mouths, right? Absolutely. Can you say anything about the, the pieces that are um, on this outside wall that have the, the collaged in like textures and. Yeah, um, I. I created those drawings um, um, starting with like chaotic elements, random elements, and then what I did was I tried to add structure and rules to the chaos um, by maybe expanding on the shapes or maybe outlining the marks that were made randomly. Um, and then I, yeah, I kind of just made some rules for each piece, and then uh, tried to execute all of them as carefully as possible um, by staying within those parameters. Mm -hmm. So everything that's there is, is drawn in, in Illustrator, or is... Uh, oh, the, oh, go ahead. For the, uh, the digital ones, or the, the drawings? Oh, yeah, that's what I was, I was talking about the digital, like, um, the digital collages, the... Uh, yeah. So um, the process for the digital collages, I um, I started with some photographs of my apartment mm -hmm. um, from weird like kind of skewed angles, uh, usually low low to the ground because at one point um, the the proposal for the project was that these perspectives are from. Uh, the little people in this work. Um, and so I gathered some scans, some old photos of tree textures that I really liked, um, and kind of just gave myself the challenge of making walls with these textures. And um, then eventually I had the idea to add myself back into the pictures. Um, so that might be the way that yeah, I think I, I leave that as a maybe um, because I um, I think it definitely could be the way some of them see the world, um, hmm. but I also like the idea of them seeing the world very pretty similar to the way we do. Well, same, that, that piece in particular makes me think of like uh, VR or like gaming because the perspective's like you're a little shorter and like. And so it makes me think about it, like needing in a virtual space as the viewer, um, as opposed to 
supposed to be a character necessarily. So even that, like, it, it makes me think about gaming and kind of virtual worlds, which I think is kind of interesting. Cool. Yeah, I, I, it was really exciting when I was completing those rooms because I didn't anticipate the space to actually feel like a room. I thought it was going to feel kind of like a, a mess of just different textures, uh, kind of in weird perspectives. But um, I was really happy with how it felt like a room, just a really weird, <laughs> strange room. Especially the uh, the one with like the fabric <laughs> on the wall. I think that's like, that one gives me weird feelings, but still fun. I like it. Cool. And uh, I'd like to say thank you for uh, the sculpture made by Rebecca Baker. It's uh, really fun. Yeah, I think. It, it was a really crucial piece to um, the show because I think it represents uh, the show as a whole and it made it outside of the home. So.